Okay, then let me uh, go next to uh, Bill Banner of Banner Model Works, who is building his OM30 caboose kit. Bill, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, everybody. How's things going? Cool. Uh, tonight, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the trim on the uh, cupola and the caboose. We're going to add the windows in, put the doors in, and probably uh, just assemble the uh, roof panels. So let's get into it. As you can see, I've already cut uh, most of the parts free from the carrier sheets just to uh, you know, speed things up a bit. So first I'm going to start with the uh, trim on the end, the ends of the cupola, and I've already painted it. Poor job, but I painted it. So what I'm going to do, I'll use my spray adhesive, just like last week, and stick these on. I won't raise the camera up, but the idea. Next time I think I'll build a studio with a camera on the other side because I'm left-handed and my hand always seems to be in the way of the camera. I'm doing the ends first, lining them up with the uh, roof line itself. Because the sides will actually overhang uh, these ends a little bit to cover them up. Let's put the trim on. So my window system uh, is pretty much the same on all of our kits. Uh, we have a sheet of windows frames, which are already cut out, got an adhesive backing, which is to peel off, okay? And so what I'll do is I'll take one of the frames, onto it, peel off the backing, place it right over the glazing itself, and stick it in place. This is the only part or portion of any of our kits to where I use a peel and stick backing. It just makes uh, getting the uh, glazing attached really clean, not smudge free, no problems. Like I say, all the structure kits are pretty much done the same way. I cut all of our, our windows on a laser. You notice the glazing has uh, a paper backing or tissue backing. What I do is uh, trim the piece from the sheet, then turn it over and get the blade underneath that paper and take it right off. So while the glue is still somewhat moist on the uh, frames up here, I'm going to put the window in and grab it from the corner so you fit it in there. Put it in from inside. It says confidently. So you picked an easier window.
Hey Bill, while you're gluing those in, can I ask a quick question? Yes. So just out of curiosity, doing those afterwards like that seems to be challenging. Um, is it better, is it put, uh, acceptable to do those ahead of time before you glue the walls up? I guess you could. Um, there could be an alignment issue when you, if you built the walls flat, and then getting the windows in the right position. It's just, I've always just done it this way. Uh, no worries, just, I've always put them in first. <laughs> I was just curious, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it can be a pain, I'll admit that, but, um, I mean, they all fit, and that's the, the critical thing for me. Uh, I'm trying to uh, make it fit by doing the, the wall flat. I, I don't know, I guess you could do though, if you did everything flat, it certainly would work. Thanks. I, I know a lot of people do it that way. Uh, and I've talked to people who do it and say, well, why don't you do it that way? And it's just like, well, I've always done it this way. So um, it's always worked for me. Does, does keep you from smudging the glass while you're doing the rest of the assembly if you do it right at the end like this? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I'll smudge it in a minute. <laughs> okay. I mean, some of the structures are really tough to get the windows put in from inside because you can barely get to them. Uh, but again, it's just like, it's just what I've always done. Now on the side windows and the end windows, I didn't really add any glue to that because there's probably still a little bit of uh, the spray adhesive on the inside uh, from when we put the sides on. Um, usually it sticks. If I'm more, if I'm concerned that it's not still um, sticky enough, I'll put some wood glue on the side of the window before I put it in from inside. So that's that. I've already done one roof panel, uh, it fits right in here. And again, I mean, tab and slot, it's all pretty simple to do. Sometimes though, you run into situations where the uh, tabs don't necessarily fit well. 
This one is. However, there will be inconsistencies in the material like that to where this ends up being a little bit thicker than the advertised thickness of the wood. So what I'll do is just take some sandpaper and take the edges off of the top part of the part. And then it'll fit snugly. If you're not happy with that, I'll take a piece of steel here and hammer it home. There you go. Trim off the other pieces. And I'm using just a chisel blade to uh, cut through the slot or the notch holding the part on the suit. Okay, so it's held together well enough. And I always glue things afterwards instead of putting glue on ahead of time because if I put glue on that roof rib, while I'm trying to get it in the slots, I'll have glue everywhere. And I do tend to put plenty of glue on. All right, there you go. That'll be it for this week. Next week, we will put the doors on, do the grab irons, um, put the chimney in, and then we'll finish it. Bill, let me ask you this question. Would, would you say that this is a an easy kit or about the, the standard uh, difficulty of the kits uh, that, that you manufacture? You know, it's... To say it's an easy kit, um, yeah, it's probably an easy kit. Uh, it really depends upon how many parts a kit will happen to have. It, it's all an assembly process, whether you're putting 10 parts together or 100 parts. Um, as long as you can follow the instructions, generally it uh, goes pretty easy. But this is a fairly simple kit. You can usually do this in an evening or two. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any questions for Bill? Bill, thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you next week.